All right, well, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm really, uh, there's a great turnout tonight. Uh, so we're here tonight so that we can go over the new uh, trash hauling system that we're trans, uh, transitioning to. My name is Jeff Roberts. I'm the Public Works Director for the City of Bellevue. And we've got representatives from Papillion Sanitation here. And so the format we're going to use tonight is we're, uh, Epiphany Ramos is going to be giving a presentation. So once that is over, then we're going to take questions from people. So just write down the questions you have, hold it till the end. And if you start hearing repeat questions, then, you know, unless you want a little more clarification, we'll be available afterwards too for any other details that you're not, uh, that you're unsure of. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Epiphany. And thanks for being here. Hello all, I wanted to start out this evening with giving some folks some history of how this came to be. I know if you're like me, you're busy, you got families, you got jobs, and maybe the first that you heard about this was a flyer that you got in the mail. This has been going on in Bellevue for a little over three years now. Uh, we first got the notice for the Sarpy County landfill closing, and we knew that we needed to do something because the operating costs of the solid waste system were going to skyrocket due to us having to transfer our waste now to um, Butler County. So our landfill is closed and our waste has to go all the way out to Butler County. Our recycling and our yard waste is still processed locally. So as we were evaluating things on a national level and locally looking at um, you know, some best practices, we developed a pilot program that we tested on the city of Bellevue residents. And two years ago, we started what we called the pilot program. And this pilot program created a lot of data for how we developed a contract for the city of Bellevue. The pilot program residents communicated with us on what worked and what didn't work. And so the program that you guys get today essentially was really designed by the residents of Bellevue. Every concern that was addressed with us in the pilot program, we, we tried to incorporate into the contract. So some uh, key items that we'll discuss here in a minute are a direct result of that. So the folks involved are Papillion Sanitation, the City of Bellevue, MUD is our billing agent, so the Metropolitan Utilities District where you have your bill that comes that says City of Bellevue Trash, they just do the billing for us. The City of Bellevue manages the contract and Papillion Sanitation is the contractor. So we've got Papillion Sanitation here today in the City of Bellevue. So everybody that's from the City of Bellevue or Papillion Sanitation can help answer questions too. Today we're going to just go, give you an overview of the brand new program. We're going to try to get an understanding of the options. And we are going to help folks to understand how to create a waste audit in their own home in case they're struggling with what type of cart selection they might need to um, have. The new program was really developed to control cost and increase recycling rates. As I talked in the beginning, we were going to transfer, transfer our waste all the way to but Butler County and we knew that that was coming. So we wanted to try to reverse some of that tonnage back here for local processing and the best way to do that is to recycle it. So instead of us sending and paying for all of our solid waste to be shipped out to the landfill, we knew a huge percentage of what wasn't going um, on it wasn't happening in terms of recycling because we created um, a waste audit before we even started the pilot program. Uh, so the costability part I'll get into in a little bit, but it is tough to um, understand what goes into the cost of your curbside service. So your curbside service not only includes what is being pulled away from your home, but it also takes care of your public space solid waste. It also takes care of your cleanup days and, of course, the billing administration and the, and the contract management. So all of that goes into the fee. And we used to be what's called a subsidized model. So we would have one charge that would get charged for us, and we would levy that charge against all the users in the city of Bellevue. And we knew our fixed income folks, our families, big families, they weren't going to be able to continue in a subsidized model unless we started processing more waste locally. So we talked about the landfill closing and the stabilization of these costs. One way that we stabilize these costs is to create a long-term contract. So you see that we will get new carts, we will get new trucks, and this is at no capital investment. So this contract had no upfront cost to the city of Bellevue because of the long-term contract where we are able to, kind of like buying a car, 
You know, you have a very minimal upfront cost and then that's amortized over, over many years. And so that's how we were able to get these brand new carts and the brand new equipment in the program and stabilize these costs, lock in these um, costs with our contractor over 10 years. This is just a visual example of basically what makes up the big cost in solid waste. We have processing costs and hauling costs, essentially. And what was happening before was our processing costs were making up the majority and our transfer costs weren't that much because we didn't have to travel that far. That's kind of flipped on its head. And so we know that we need to keep our processing costs down by basically hauling less tonnage out to Butler County. We've worked really hard to develop a program that we feel is convenient and it's clean and it's safe. The safety part is one of the things that I'd like to um, just explain a little bit more. We've had some incidences here in Bellevue even um, where we've had folks being hit by uh, drivers, our, our, our drivers hanging off the back of the truck. I know everybody's seen a waste collector um, hanging off the back of the truck. And I know everybody drives by him and goes, gosh, I'm glad I'm not that guy. And it's true, that's one of the most injurious um, industries out here. And that's what's happening. Our guys are getting hurt consistently. So part of what we're trying to do is uh, create an automated system. And that is a safer system, not only for our drivers, but also the people on the streets. The cart selection has started right now. So you guys have gotten us something in the mail, hopefully, or you've seen something in the newspaper, or maybe you've even seen something um, on the media channels. Here, I'll give you a little clip, too, in a second uh, about one that just happened a day or two ago. Um, so we've had a lot of coverage about what's happening right now, and essentially, it's all about selecting what best fits your needs. So it's about understanding what your waste needs are and selecting a size that best fits your needs. The carts will begin to be delivered in April. And in April, you'll get these carts delivered. And in April, if you do not want your current trash containers, whatever they may be, if you're like me, mine are pretty old anyways, just pull them down to the curb and we'll make sure that which ones are recycled will be recycled, whatever is recyclable. And whatever else um, you guys don't want, we will remove uh, for no fee. And then the automated trucks will start rolling out in May. So your carts will be out, and then the automated trucks will be out. Until the automated trucks out in May, we will still use a rear loader. But they will all be rolling on the street in May, and that's when the new contract starts. Now I'm going to go over some very simple logistics about it. So the carts, as you walked in, you saw three different sizes. There's a 35, kind of the small guy, 65, and a 95-gallon cart size. You can have one of each cart if you'd like, but all of your fees are just based off of your solid waste carts, so the blue ones. On your card, you see a blue uh, picture of the solid waste with some price tags attached to it. Those things replace your current MUD charge. So this isn't an addition to. Your current MUD charge on your bill is $13.42. So you can essentially recycle more and pay less for your trash than what you're paying today if that fits your waste management needs, your personal waste management needs. Um, the next option that you have is to select any size recycling cart that you'd like. We want folks to recycle as much as possible. As I talked about, recycling is processed here locally. It goes into our local economy. It's right here, and we don't have to haul it out to Butler County. So the recycling card is provided to you at no additional fee, and you can have any size container that you'd like. Your yard waste cart, um, you can also have any size container that you'd like, and that is for yard waste only, the compostable yard waste. And you can continue to have an unlimited yard waste by just utilizing biodegradable bags. And I'll go into, once we get into the yard waste, why that is. So another little added bonus, a free bonus for you, is a groundbreaking program called the Hefty Energy Bag. The city of Bellevue will be the first city in the entire nation to contract the hefty energy bag on a, on a city level. So I'm a Bellevue resident. I've been in Bellevue my whole life, and I'm really proud to say that Bellevue is the first in the entire nation to do this bag. And the bag essentially helps us to take recycling to another level. It takes what's called non-recyclable plastics. So those plastics that you're kind of like, well, does this go into the recycling container because it's really flimsy and I don't see the number on it? like plastic bags from the grocery store, straws, plastic utensils from going out to eat, your styrofoam stuff that you get from going out to eat, all of those things that go into your hefty energy bag now and then into your recycling container. Again, all these things are optional. Of course, you can just get a solid waste container if you'd like. Changes in pickup. 
some folks have asked, you know, is my day going to change? No, your day is not going to change. We're going to run this program with no changes. Things will get faster, though. Your pickup will be faster um, because the trucks are automated and they will uh, go through your neighborhoods quite a bit quicker. Um, the carts really need to still be down at the curb by 7 o'clock in the morning, just like they always have. Some folks set them out the night before. That's fine. Um, the carts really need to be kept about four feet away from um, the poles or mailboxes. And so that's just because of the automated arm. And we'll show a video here. I think we should show the video maybe next, if that's okay. We'll show a video here of the truck and then uh, folks can kind of see why it's important that you don't set it next to your mailbox because that truck has to pick it up. Um, the lids on the carts really do need to be closed. If they're lifted open when we pick it up, stuff can fly out and we really want to try to get away from any kind of open tops. The collection trucks, trucks are only able to handle the items placed in your cart. And here in a minute, I'll go over things that are extra. So things that like bulk items, my chair, my old vacuum cleaner, I don't want those types of things. We can still take curbside, but there's a little bit of a different process because it's a different truck that has to pick it up. So the yard waste, what goes in your yard waste container is still compostable yard waste only. Um, so sticks and branches over an inch still cannot be composted. Um, those will need to either go to the Free City um, Tree Dump, which is open the last Saturday of the month on Cedar Island Road. And that's always been available to residents as long as I've known. Um, so that's available to you. The Free Dump is open on the last Saturday of the month from 8 to noon, and that's at 8902 Cedar Island Road. And so if you've got big branches, they can go there. And we do mulch those up, and we use those in the Bellevue Public Schools and Public Parks, so all the mulch that um, comes out of that. Recycling. Recycling, obviously, we want to focus on here and what goes into the recycling um, cart. I'm, I'm sure that everybody knows how great recycling is for the environment, and if my pitch here doesn't help at all to explain about the local processing, um, you can certainly call me direct and we can talk a long time about it. So your items that can be recycled are all the same items that we have been accepting curbside, and recycling is still single stream, just like it always has been. And those are your paper products, your milk cartons, your tin cans, aluminum cans, your plastics one through seven. Aerosol and paint cans can be recycled, but they have to be completely emptied. The paint cans have to be completely empty of paint. If they have paint in them, it is a hazardous material. You need to go ahead and contact under the sink, the Omaha under the sink, just like you always have. Um, juice boxes, cardboard boxes, all the stuff that has gone in there, uh, water bottles, pop bottles, all the plastics one through seven. Things that can't be recycled are the glass. Still glass is not recyclable curbside. I will show you where glass is recyclable here in the city of Bellevue. We have a couple bulk collection sites currently, and we are working to get more bulk collection sites. Um, tissue paper, like blowing your nose tissue and paper towels, wax coated paper, rubber bands, styrofoam are not recyclable. Um, plastic bags are not recyclable. And like any soiled paper, whether it's wet or it has food products on it, those types of things need to stay out of the recycling cart. And then we'll talk real quickly about the hefty energy bag. So this new free program that you get. Um, that is this, your snack bags, chip bags. Again, like I said, all these weird plastic packaging things that you thought, I don't think this is recyclable because I don't see a number on it. You're probably right, and that goes into your hefty energy bag. Pet food bags, straws, um, plastic silverware, styrofoam gets to go in there, um, squeezable juice pouches, um, your... Uh, pudding pack pouches, candy wrappers, frozen fruit, fruit and ve veggie bags, um, pudding cups. So all of those non-recyclable plastics go into your hefty energy bag, and that goes into your recycling cart. Glass. Like we said, glass is, re is recyclable in the city of Bellevue, but we cannot collect it curbside. One of the reasons we cannot collect a curbside um, is it's very dangerous for the workers when they're sorting recycling, and it's also, it also doesn't have a local market. So it's one of those things that it's just uneconomical for us to transport our recycling of glass out of state. So the transportation of the recycling negates out the um, really economical benefits of it, both for the environment and the cost of it. So we do do that in a bulk way. Um, at, there's a couple other recycling facilities that are kind of close to us outside of the city limits. Um, they are First Star Fiber on 103rd and I Street. Um, they are north, at the Northwest parking lot on 75th and Corby Streets in Omaha. And the River City Recycling at about um, 60th and Harris in there. Those are all places um, outside of the city uh, that you can look for recycling as well.
So landfill trash. The carts can be used for anything that really isn't recyclable, composted, except for the hazardous waste. Like we said, that does need to go to under the sink. Um, hazardous waste, um, it's on a, about 120th Street, and um, we can get you that information by just going to underthesink.org. That, that is an Omaha um, facility, but they will accept a Bellevue's hazardous waste. Miscellaneous items, like we said, we'll get to the things that don't fit into the cart. So large items, bulk items, extra bags. Um, in the large item side of things, so things that are going to be like the size of a couch, uh, mattresses, um, you need to go ahead and call us ahead if you want those collected curbside. We do have to roll a different type of truck through the neighborhood, and that's why it's really important for you to call us, and Papillion Sanitation will help you with uh, developing what that would cost for you to haul it off curbside, depending on how much you have. Um, you do get two free curbside bulk pickups. Bulk pickups are uh, 60 pounds or four by two feet uh, approximately, and you can use those any time that you'd like. And if you need additional bulk pickups, we did volume by that price in our contract. I believe it's $15. Um, again, like I said, it's just important that you call us ahead with your extras. Um, we can accept extra bags of trash if you have that one-off where family's out from out of town visiting. You just, again, need to call us because um, the truck, the, the driver needs to know. So like we uh, were talking about doing a waste audit, so maybe I'm not sure, maybe I haven't recycled before, but if it means that I can save some money, I'm definitely willing to give it a try. So what we do suggest is that folks conduct their own waste audit. You can physically do it or you could mentally do it. I'm not big for rummaging through trash, so I mentally did mine. Um, I just knew what I was sorting out, and I kind of mentally counted every time that I took a bag of trash and every time that I unloaded my 18-gallon bin of recycling for the week. And I, at the end of the week, I had an idea of how, what size carts. So if you do want to do it physically, you know, you just get three different receptacles if you need three, if you want to do the hefty energy bag, if you want to do your recycling, if you want to do your trash and just try it for a week and see what you come up with. And you might be very surprised at how um, recycling and using this program can really limit your solid waste curbside. So just separate your recyclables and solid waste and try to record how many bags you fill each day. Sort them out throughout the week. Like I said, mentally, maybe you keep a tally. Maybe it's a game you play with the kids. Once you've done that, or if you need to do that, then it's really time to select your cart. Folks have approximately until February 14th to select their carts, and that is so that we manufacture only the amount of carts and the types and sizes that people want. It's uh, really a, to conserve on waste and cost in the contract. If we were to just deliver one thing to everybody, we know that doesn't fit the needs, and our Bellevue pilot program showed us that. So you can select, like we talked, the three different sizes. Here's a good graphic that is available on all of the handouts. Um, then you can best select it based off of what you estimate your trash to be or after you do your waste audit. You have a couple different options on how to make your cart selection. You can go to yourcartplaysapart.com. Um, you can also rip off the uh, prepaid postage mailer that you have gotten and um, put that in the mail. Or you can also just give us a call at 402-346-7800 and we can answer uh, personal questions or help you, help you in your selection process. Um, but you have got these options to be able to select your cart by February 14th. So we're going to open it up for some q and I'm sure there's lots of great questions out here. Because we are recording this so that residents that couldn't be here that are homebound tonight, um, you know, or ha you know, ha just don't have transportation to get here, we are going to post this video out here. So I just ask if we can form an orderly line here. And if you speak into the microphone, I will answer every qu possible question, hopefully, that you guys have. Otherwise, I'll give you the correct resource to answer those questions. If you'd like to select your cart tonight, you just need to fill out one of those things and leave it with one of the folks there on the table before you leave. So like I said, if you would like to come up and ask questions, we are here and so everybody gets the benefit of good questions. Uh, my name is Gary Floyd. I'm the vice president of the board for Twin Ridge One and Two. My question for our association because we have, I'm not sure now, I think about 51 units, and it's probably about 10 buildings, is the expectation that individual homeowners will handle uh, the costs to do the audit and select their trash, 
or is that something you're expecting us as the association to handle for our regime? Um, he's got a question I think that would also flow through not only to, there, we do in the City of Bellevue have a couple of HOAs that we from the City of Bellevue bill directly to the HOA and then they pass on through fees to their uh, residents. So this is uh, not unlike some property management companies. So if you're here from a property management company, um, you can always call me if you have further questions about your billing. But essentially things won't operate any differently. If your resident wants to select carts, they can select their carts. We will provide you an itemized billing of that. That's the only difference where it was one per 51. And then we, I also talked to Linda too, so we can have an offline discussion about what options are available for you for billing. Um, so HOAs are a little bit different, and we only have a few of them. But prop, from a property management standpoint, same thing ensues. Essentially, everything remains the same, except for if the, the customers do get to choose their cart, and we will itemize bill you one, one bill. Does that answer your questions? Otherwise, you could certainly call me, because it's kind of an individual one. OK. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Mike Katrosh, <laughs> and my question has a history. About 19 years ago, I gave up on the carts because I could not keep them upright. My driveway is sloped. The street in front of our house is sloped. Oh, hello. <laughs> I know, that's why people want to hear questions. My driveway is sloped. My street is sloped. 19 years ago, I gave up on carts because I could not keep them upright. I've been using a big black bag taken out to the curb every Monday since then. So my question is this. When my cart is on its side and the truck rolls up, is it going to stay that way, or will the driver get out, police it up, and hook it up to his automated rig? Yeah. So there will be some uh, opportunities throughout town for our guys to get out of the truck still. So we've got things like cars that are parked in the way or appurtenances that maybe are you know, unique to your street or your home. There are some sloped driveways. There are some tight corners. And the guys will have to get out and physically pull the cart up to the arm to get it into the truck. So it's, it isn't perfect, and no automation really is perfect because we have a few one-off um, instances. But the guys are trained in it, and they will not only do that, but they'll also put it back upright and where they found the cart. Hello, my name is Beth Nelson, and I have two questions. The first question is, um, if I select a cart and decide that it's too small, how often or how do I go about exchanging Great my cart? Question. Great question. Beth has an awesome question. So during the implementation part of the program, we will um, have like a 60-day grace period, essentially, because we know this is new for Bellevue residents. If you select something, you don't like it, give us a call. We'll change it out for free. After that, we do have to operate a lot like your insurance carriers to keep our administrative and overhead costs down of switching things at the whim every month. So if we came out every other week and switched your carts out, your costs would go through the roof. So essentially what it will look like is once a year, we will have a drive where you can change your carts for free for no, no reason that you need to give us. We will just change out whatever you'd like. Otherwise, it's a change of life. So if you get married or the other thing that happens in marriage, We'll take care of you, but other than that, other than life events, it really is a once, once a year thing, and other than this implementation where we have the 60-day grace period. Good question. And then my second question is, um, I have a friend that's in the pilot neighborhood, and she says that they only pick up recycling every other week. Good question. So, so like I said, the pilot program neighborhood in the Bellevue residents really designed this program. One of the top things that they talked about was, hey, we want our recycling every week. So we went to city council and said, even though this is going to keep our costs down by doing recycling every week, our residents want it every week, so that's what we want to provide them. So the things that you can thank your pilot program people for are the variable size containers. Believe it or not, they were the ones fighting for the different size containers. They were the ones fighting for unlimited yard waste so that we didn't have to put our yard waste into the trash cart and that we would still collect all the yard waste that you'd like. They were the ones that were fighting for the weekly recycling. So the, this program was really designed by the citizens of Bellevue with the help of us doing all of the research and the legwork too. So yes, that will be a weekly recycling. All right. Thank you. Right. Appreciate you. My name's Dave Weiss and I've got a question, one for the city and one for Papillion. If you are a senior citizen and you're unable to take your cart out to the curb, will, will, will your driver get out and retrieve that for that senior citizen? 
Awesome question. We do provide a walk-up service today. So if you have a disability, um, you just need to contact us. There's a little process that we go through and we provide what's called walk-up. Um, so that would be, you know, you just need to get it outside the door. Some um, senior citizens can get it out on the front porch. Some senior citizens have a back uh, by, by the garage that they can put it out, that's fine. The guys will just, and gals will walk up and get that. So that will still maintain. And if you have that service today, it just flows with you. So no problems there. Um, you had another question. The other question is for the city. And my concern is in the pilot program, throughout the area. I work for the power company and so I'm all about the city of Bellevue and stuff. I would see these carts sitting out for several days. I'd like to see something where the cart would go out the night before and would be turned back in or put away off the street before nightfall the second night because like I say they're quite cumbersome and large carts. I'd like the city to sit there and review that if all possible. Great comments. We will take all comments and concerns that we might need to address with the council, too. Hi, my name is Jim Kresnick. I have a question concerning snowbirds. If you're gone for two or three months during the uh, winter season, can I put uh, my garbage uh, bill on hold or get a vacation stop on it? Good question. Thank you. Thank you for asking that. We will continue vacation holds. So those of you that don't know that we do this, but if you are gone on vacation for an extended vacation, all you need to do is call us. We will put a pause on your account. And then when you come back, you just give us a call and we turn it back on again. So same thing like you've always done. Hi. My name's Larry, my name's Larry Peek and I have a question regarding the selection of your cart. You have two addresses on here. If you have two addresses, do you get two different carts? Can oh. you get carts for that? Oh. One's a rental property. Good question. Good yeah. question. We, we really would like one card filled out per address. Okay. Is that okay? That's yeah, fine. get to do it one more time. I'm That's sorry. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. That helps us keep our confusion down. Okay. I'm Charlotte Riley, and I just want to know if there is a charge on the orange bags oh, and where we question. get them from. Good question. So like I said, the city of Bellevue is the first uh, place in the nation to do this in a contract. So your first couple of years supply, we will just supply with your carts. If you run out, you can purchase them at hy -Vee's. Um I can get you a list of that, or it's also available at the Hefty Energy Bag um, website. And you can also purchase them from our hauler directly. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe they're $10 a box of them. For, for a whole roll, and I think the, there's a, a sample out here on the table too that you can look at. But you will get them for free um, with your carts during the first couple of years. If the City of Bellevue residents like this program, I will champion it back to the City Council um, to extend the contract throughout the life of the contract. But I have to, we have to see if the City of Bellevue residents like this and they want to use it. So um, if you like it, please use it and we will, we will fight for it to get into contract. My name is Julie Tomasek, and it's somewhere along the line, it was my understanding that if you got a solid waste cart and a yard waste cart, with the yard waste being seasonal, good, good that um, we don't use it most of the year, only during the months we're mowing. So they would let us use the yard waste with solid waste. Good point. So can yes. you Thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> I know there's a lot of information out here, and I just want to expound on if there's something that I don't answer, you could grab me afterwards, or you can always go to your cartplaysapart.com or always call. So Julie had a great point um, that I didn't get to yet. The yard waste cart, if you are not using it um, during the winter months for storage in your garage, guess what? You can use it for trash for free. So um, if you do you do yard waste, I would strongly suggest getting at least the smallest cart because you can always add your biodegradable bags. Um, or if you like the big one and that works for you, that's fine. You can certainly use that during the off months. And yard waste is still going to be April 1st to November 30th. So that hasn't changed. We stopped collecting yard waste in November 30th, and from then until, then until the beginning of April, you can use that um, container for trash. If it's pulled down to the curb during those winter months, we assume it's trash and it, and it does go to the landfill. I'm in, my name is Jeanette Stallings. I live in Blue Ridge. So I had two questions. So if the cart is damaged, you said once a year, um, so is that the resident's cost to replace that cart? And then the second question is, you've referenced that this 
is going to save us money. So what are we paying right now for trash pickup? Sure. Good questions. So her first question um, had to do with lost damage or stolen carts. If uh, the wind blows it away, if your neighbors steal it, um, or you know it gets run over by the car, all you gotta do is call us. For free, we will come out and replace it. Your carts will have a, an inventory tag on them type thing, and it's actually a barcode that we can um, scan. So we will audit that once a year just to make sure that we have all the carts out there in the correct locations, and if we can make adjustments, we will there. Otherwise, immediately, we will replace it for no fee to the residents. Her second question was, what do I pay today? Good question. On your MUD bill, there's a line item there that says City of Bellevue Trash, and we are underneath our old contract, and that contracted rate is $13.42 a month. So like I mentioned in the beginning, if you recycle more, you can pay less, you know. This is $13.40 for the smallest container, and you can have any size um, recycling container you'd like. My name's Randy Bernhagen. Um, I've always uh, thought very highly of the service we've gotten, uh, especially the men that are on the trucks. And they're not really hanging off the trucks. They have a platform to stand on. But my question is, is how many of them are losing their jobs? I think that could be best answered by... I think that can be best answered by Papillion Sanitation, and we did ask that of Papillion Sanitation up front. And I think Mike, who's the um, operations manager for all of these guys out here and gals um, working, he can give you a good answer there. Oh, I'm so sorry. So this kind gentleman up here wanted to really make sure that he shared his concern for the process that is automation and making sure that we had a good idea of how many folks may or may not be losing jobs because of automation. So, so the reality here is that the automation, we're not going to get rid of any employees um, at the end of the day. The Part of the struggles that the industry has and part of the, the safety issues that we have with the current methodology is that most of the time those guys on the back of the truck are contract labor who are not full-time employees and we're asking them for help. So given that, all of our employees will stay with the company and we'll also get them off the back of the truck and get them a little bit safer environment. Thanks, Mike. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. My name is Jerry Stender, and I just have a question. I live in a very busy street, so how close do these containers have to be to the curb? Because now we set our garbage cans back from the street because of the traffic. I might let, might let Mike answer that because it's kind of an operational. So the arms on the trucks have a six-foot extended reach. So depending on whether there's cars in the road or other obstacles, uh, essentially you could be six feet off the curb. We ask that it's closer than that, optimally two to four feet off the curb or where the sidewalk would be on most uh, you know, communities that have the sidewalk, uh, but we can reach in six feet. If it's too far back, like Epiphany said earlier, we'll get out of the truck, we'll come bring it up to the truck and then service it. Uh, just to follow up on that, in the same instance on this busy street, the city rolls the snow around to the green space, so I can't get my cans to the curb. They have to sit on the sidewalk because I'm not going to block my driveway with my cans. So will you get out of the truck and come and get those cans and move them around? Sidewalk. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. I apologize if you've already said this, but okay. what about our existing trash cans, sure. both plastic and metal? Sure. Nope. It's a good point because it's a question that gets asked a lot. Um, absolutely. So he just wanted us to revisit what happens to my old containers. If I um, So of course we want you to find a repurpose for them um, if you can. Some folks are rinsing them out and using them to hold things like shovels and rakes and stuff. Some folks are putting sports equipment in them. Others are using, using them for things like compost in their backyard. That's obviously what we would support. Um, but if you don't want to do that, if you'd really just like to get rid of them, whether they're metal cans or plastic cans, we will be collecting them curbside once we get your carts delivered, and we will be recycling what we can of those containers. I was going back to uh, price again. Uh, you, were, you were telling everybody that they can lower their... You were telling everybody they can lower their, um, lower their bill, but... If you pick the smallest can, it's still 1340, the same price that we're paying right now. Uh, so I don't That's see where. You, 
thirteen forty. So you're saying the two cents? Yep. Oh. <laughs> two cents. Two cents. Uh, the the other. Yeah. Two two cents on your bill. Uh, the next thing is okay if you have you stated if you had the extra couple of bags, mm -hmm. so you get two times a year you have. Um, if you have extra bags, they'll pick it up twice out of the year. So if you have a third, fourth, then it's $15 for the extra pickup. Well, the bags are different. So there's a difference between an extra bag and an extra bulk. So bulk is like up to 60 pounds and four by two. Bags are like a 13 gallon kitchen bag is a dollar extra. And correct me if I'm wrong, but then the next size up is $2. So if you do have those one-off times during the um, season, like I said, people from out of town, you just need to call us and we can get you serviced. And to comment on the, the cost piece, I know that you know maybe you, it's hard to kind of visualize how much impact that our city land our county landfill closing really had on the cost of operations. It's a 120 mile additional round trip for us to take our solid waste. And that's hours, that's time on the road, and that's processing costs. We still don't have our processing costs controlled because that we don't own the landfill. So essentially, when we did the scenario for figuring out what kind of an increased cost this was going to be for the city of Bellevue residents, we understood that it was going to be above the affordability indice if we didn't change our program. So the saving money and costability are two different conversations but definitely in the same wheelhouse. Any more questions? I know some neighborhoods have, where you, you can only park one side of the street, and like, they can only park on one side, so now that one side, if you live on the side where all the parking's at, you've got cars, so where are they gonna place the carts with all the cars? So like, like we mentioned before, the, the arms can extend out, they can boom out. So your carts just need to be within four feet of the curb. If there's a car or an obstruction in the way, the gentleman will get off the truck and pull the cart out so that they can service it with the automated arm. Good question. My name's Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Um, my, I have several questions okay. that I've been kind of tallying and I've taken some off that other people have asked. So. One comment, got it. One comment that I have about past recycling experience has been to go to the trouble of sorting everything out only to watch the trash guy dump it all back into the same can. So I guess my concern would be that I'm going to go to all this trouble to watch that guy pick up my recycling and dump it in the same truck. Sure. We can, we can look at some issues with contamination that the city of Bellevue has had in the past. So we've had an open top 18 gallon um, container. Uh, it, if it was contaminated, they did put it into the trash truck. If you see something happening that you think is wrong, the first, you, re you really need to contact the city. You know, we have a really extensive contract. Our contract used to be this big, now it's this big. We have a lot of protections in this contract to make sure that our contractor holds up their end of the bargain. And we have a lot of protections to make sure if they don't, essentially there's liquidated damages. So if you see something happening out there that doesn't look right, call us, please call us right away. But essentially a lot of what was happening, if you did see that, had to do with contamination. So that'll lead me to my next question. Customer service issues. Who do we talk to? Bellevue or Papillion? You can talk to either Bellevue or Papillion. Um, Papillion is your first line. If it's something as simple as my trash got missed this week, um, they will put you on the route and get you back on. If it's something more complex that you think is a contract situation, please contact the city of Bellevue. Okay. What if I forget to take my trash out to the curb or I'm out of town during trash pickup? <laughs> was it? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the answer. Go ahead. Yeah. Tell me again. That's, I'm getting old. Yeah, that's okay. We have trash pickup days, um, again, for operational cost purposes. If we were to uh, really allow everybody to put out their trash whenever they remembered to put out their trash, um, we really wouldn't be able to keep our costs down. So the, if you have a vacation that you're gonna be gone for a long period of time, contact us. We can stop your trash. We'll even save you money by stopping your trash. If you have something that was missed and it was, already, and it was put out, but the driver missed it, contact us and they are contractually required to pick that up that same day. And that probably needs more answer my question then. And then 
Um, let's see. I guess my last question, sorry, why can't I use the trash can I already have? So the trash can that you have is not considered an inventoried piece of property. Because of the way things are built, we need to know what people have and when they have it. Um, and it really does have to do with what's a best fit for the automated truck. So if you have a cart that you really love, we're happy about that. We hope you can find a repurposed use for it. But these are inventoried piece of property that um, help us to make sure that the right carts are in the right place and the right people are being built the right things. Um, and they also, if you have your own car, if it gets lost, damaged, or stolen, you're required the cost of that then to replace your own car. Where in this process, um, we will replace it at no fee to you. Hi. Hello, I'm Pat. Um, I currently pay extra to Papillion Sanitation to get a larger recycle bin, and it has re uh, recycle bank with it tied to it. And that actually gives you bonuses and so you can get coupons and stuff to actually get more out of it. Is this program going to have that tied to it to be able to add that extra value to people? Um, you will have to correct me if I'm wrong, but recycling for rewards will still be a uh, benefit that the city of Bellevue residents can request. Um, if you don't know about recycling for rewards, it's a, essentially a 95 gallon recycling container um, that some residents were already purchasing above and beyond their city contract fee. And that um, every time you recycle, it creates a rewards program with coupons and discounts and things like that. It is my understanding you can still keep that. Um, and if you'd like to keep that and order your city recycling cart, that's certainly something that's included in your fee. So it would still be extra then? It, it would still be extra. It's basically the same service for free now, but we don't get your coupons. Hi, I've got, um, I'm, I'm Carol, and I have two recycling questions. Are paper milk cartons recyclable? And if I have paper from my shredder, do I just dump that into the recycling bin and mix it in with the cans and everything else? It will, it will take shredded paper as long as it's not soiled. It will take milk cartons, definitely. My turn now. Okay. You don't want to know my name. Okay, well, whatever you'd like. How come you don't go in alleys? Oh, great question. He asked, how come we can't service alleys? I got a good alley. You got a good alley? Okay. <laughs> the alley um, just will not allow spatially for the automated trucks to go in there. So that's one of the primary reasons why we just can't go into the alleys. Um, we, uh, we do feel like the alleys were basically done for aesthetic purposes. So now with your new carts, it will cut down on litter and you will be able to be serviced curbside. But because of the automated truck, we would have too many obstructions in our alleys. We did a lot of measurements and a lot of trial runs to try to keep things the same, but it was going to be impossible with the new trucks. Yeah, I can understand that, I guess. And an old man like me has got to push it out in the street now, huh? It's on wheels. Oh, I know that. What if it rolls down the street? I guess you'll just have to call us and get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take the garbage Omaha. Hello again. You can always call me, too. I think I already did. Okay. Um, my other question is, you mentioned that if you, had, if you didn't have the trash or if you're going out of the area, you can put your account on hold. Are you talking you will not get charged that month? Yes. Or you, no. Now, if you're given that option, can we get the option to opt out of the program if we get a, a cheaper, because I can find a competitor that's a lot cheaper than what I will, will get paid now. Sure. Good question. So like I mentioned at the beginning, um, your $13.42 that you currently pay and your $13.40, $16.44, $18.99 that you will be paying isn't just for your curbside service. It's also for your um, cleanup days and your public space um, service. So all of the trash that we have in our public spaces like parks and swimming pools and all of that stuff all rolled into your solid waste fees. So. Um, that hopefully answers that question on, you know, what else does it include? The vacation hold thing, yes, you can put it on your vacation hold for three months at a time. Give us a call. We'll put it on hold. You will not be charged during those vacation hold months. If you opt out of the service, you will still be levied that minimum monthly fee, which now is $13.42. It will be $13.40 moving forward. 
Okay, I think you kind of touched on additional bags. Yep. And we have to call ahead. Yep. Additional bags. <laughs> I know. Additional bags, and we have to pay for additional bags. What if somebody just comes and throws their bag of trash? Report it, absolutely. Uh, what if I don't know I'm at work? Oh. Uh, so if you have something out there that was not called ahead, we will give you a tag. You need to call us and let us know. If it was a dumping situation, obviously that's a code enforcement issue, and you need to let the city of Bellevue know. So if you're at work, somebody dumps trash on your lawn, just like it would happen today, you would need to call the city of Bellevue, and we will, um, we will deal with that um, through the laws that we already have established. Hi. Hi. I'm a little short, sorry. Um, I have a list of questions. Um, what are the hours for calling? Oh, that's a good one. I think it's, I'm open from 7 um, to 3.30 and Papillion Sanitation is 8 to 5. Is that Monday through Friday? Yep, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm here all day, every okay. day. Uh, no, Monday through Friday, yeah. Okay, so I work at a place that I, I don't have access to call you on my breaks or, or such or during the day. So is there going to be an email option? Yes. Um, online to select your carts, you can just go to the yourcartplaysapart.com. If you have questions, um, you can just uh, get get my email address. It is out there on the City of Bellevue website. My name is Epiphany Ramos. I'm the wastewater operations manager. You can leave me a personal email if you'd like. The City of Bellevue also has a contact page um, where you can leave a, an email there, and they will route it to the right person. If it is just a, I need to select my carts, you could just do that on the online farm at yourcartplaysapart.com. So did that answer it? But you can always email me too. Okay. Um, I got quite a bit. During the holidays, we naturally have a lot more trash, obviously. Is the extra pickup gonna be something that we have to call to make that arrangement? Or is it just naturally going to be picked up and expecting that everybody's gonna have extra trash? Good question. So in the holiday months, just also remember that you can use your yard waste cart for trash. A lot of the things that happen, you know, your wrappings and your packagings, hopefully a lot of those are recyclable. If you do have extra things because of the automated truck, you will always need to give us a call. If it doesn't, if it doesn't fit in your cart, you do need to give us a call because we have to send out a different truck. And I just wanted to clarify, um, we're able to use additional uh, Yard waste bags, yes. in, in addition to our yard, our yard waste container. This thing's awful enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to, to reiterate, your yard waste is still unlimited. After you use the cart, you will need to put it in the biodegradable bags uh, because the, the, the guys need to actually have a cart to put it into the truck. It comes into the top of the truck now, not the, the back of the truck, and they can't physically throw it up there. So they have to put it, the bag into the cart and then the cart into the truck. So it's still unlimited so and for free. Is, is one available for them to put it yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, we got this beautiful flyer about these orange bags. Where do we get them? How much do they cost? <laughs> so the, the orange bags will be delivered with your carts and um, you'll get a year's supply of them, a big roll of them. If you need more, then you can pick them up at Hy-Vee, like, a, um, like a, uh, you can look online there at the Hefty Orange Energy Bag, or you can call Papillion Sanitation, and they have them for order there if you need more than that. Otherwise, they will come to you once a year for the first two years. After those two years, if you'd like the program to continue and you want it to support, let your local council person know. Let us know so that we can champion including it under the contract. And I gotta thank you for your patience here because I had a lot of questions. Um, I have a large family. I have nine children that I take care of and most every day. So that being said, even if we recycle, we're gonna have to have an extra, either an extra recycle bin or an extra trash bin. Is there an additional cost for an additional bin? Trash bins are $9 extra. Um, so, you know, if you need an extra because you have a huge family, there's also obviously a commercial option that you can look at. If you want to look at options that are really um, above and beyond the 395 gallons, um, it is really close to what we actually allow curbside limits today. 
So if you want to look at even further and above options, let's say none of these options fit your need, we may have some citizens like that, just contact us and we can kind of address some of those options that are with the city provided holler. Of course, then you also have options outside of that too. So I would suggest giving me a call too. So is that 1899 plus Plus a nine if you want the tra another trash one. So yeah. I'm my that's the best we can do for the tonnage that has to go. Every every ton that has to go is another 120 miles. Okay, thank you. My name's my name's Ann, and I have a question. Thank goodness sure. this doesn't happen very often. But when we have a huge snowstorm, what is the procedure, and where are we going to put the? Same place you put your cans today in a snowstorm, probably. Um, but the guys will basically just have to work through it. Um, if you got a big mound of snow, please try to put it there. Um, if you can try to at least put them in a place where they're upright. I mean, when it when it's an emergency hazardous condition out there, kind of all bets are off, and the guys do have to get out and pull the cart so that they can get them serviced. So if you know if you can get it to some place where it's serviceable, please get it to some place where it's serviceable. If it's a big mound of snow. You know, I think that's, I don't know what you deal with at your residence, but as long as the carts are upright and they can see them, they can move them so that they can service them. Well, I have a sloped driveway, so I have to put it in the bag and the, on the snow bank. The yeah, bank some snow folks bank. have had to, like, say, well, if it has to be on a snow bank, how are we going to deal with that? Well, they're, they're going to have to get out of the truck and grab it. Okay, no problem. You could always call me too. I can call you. Yeah, my next question is, I understand businesses have to buy or rent the, their trash service of their Different. own. Yep. Different. But what about city offices? What are the plans for you guys sure. in terms of trash service? Yep. City offices are included in this contract. So not only does um, they, do they service us residentially, but they service all of our parks, our swimming pools, and all of our um, city facilities. All right, well, thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks, Epiphany, for your presentation. We are past our allotted time here. So we will be uh, hanging around, kind of cleaning up a little bit if you have any more questions to get a hold of us. But again, thanks for coming out tonight. And we're always available for questions by telephone, email, or any other means that you want.